Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us start this lecture again a quotation from Albert Einstein. A person who has never made a mistake never tried anything new and that is a very important one. And so, before starting our lecture today, let us recall what we learnt in the last lecture. And we discuss about basically the heat is one mode of energy interaction between system and surrounding and which is basically due to the temperature gradient. And then uh, we also find out like how it is different from the work and what are the similarities between the work and heat and we learn that both the work and heat are basically path function, it does not depend on the uh, what you call <coughs> rather it is an inexact differential and it will be uh, what you call a boundary work that means a boundary interaction between the system and surrounding it goes through the boundary. And then we moved into the how many thermodynamic variables one can uh, you know vary independently for a system and we state the uh, state postulate we say that number of uh, uh, thermodynamic properties that can be varied independently is equal to number of reversible work mode plus 1 and we have taken some examples and then to demonstrate that how it can be. And then we moved into the various ways of measuring temperature and also the importance of the temperature scale which will be independent of thermometric fluid. And now today we will be looking at basically the properties and <coughs> related to the thermodynamics and how it is varied because the properties only will tell us about the systems interaction with the surrounding and how it is you know. Uh, doing <coughs> and the state of the interactions can be judged by looking at the properties in a quantitative manner. So, to evaluate the degree of change the system properties had to be known right and basically because the change of state means change in properties I mean thermodynamic properties. Let us uh, look at a, a system which was it at state 1, it is can move through the path B or it can move through the path C to the point 2 or it can move through the path A. The properties will be basically not dependent on the path taken by the system, it will be uh, depend uh, will be related to the point like where it is state 1 or state 2 therefore, it is a point function. So, what are the kinds of thermodynamic properties we will be handling in other words how we can classify it you can we can classify into two kinds one is measurable properties like pressure volume temperature you know all these things we can measure. But there will be some non measurable properties like internal energy, enthalpy, entropy, Gibbs free energy, Helmholtz free energy, and other things. So, these are non measurable properties. So, we need to also learn how we can you know have those non measurable properties by using the data of measurable property. That means, we need to create some you know 
ways and means of connecting both the measurable and non measurable properties that we will be uh, doing little later on. <coughs> but what here we will be doing these properties is basically for a pure substance right, because substance can be various kinds, but we will be looking at pure substance. Question arises what do you mean by pure substance right. For example, if I say a brass and if I take a copper right, okay. so can I call it as a pure substance, the brass is a pure substance or copper is a pure substance, which one naturally copper, but is it that sense what we talk about here, right. So, what do you mean by a pure substance, for example, if I take nitrogen gas right and I take air, air having constituent of what oxygen nitrogen mainly right, it can be other gases, but we are neglecting other gases. So, can I call it as a pure substance, if I, I cannot right na? air I cannot say as a pure substance, am I right. Some of you people are agreeing to my statement that air cannot be a pure substance, we will see as we go along whether you are right or wrong. Right. For example, I will take water and some oil, there is a lot of emulsions you know emulsions kind of thing. I can take a biodiesel and diesel you know we can mix you know nowadays we are trying to mix that or alcohol with your uh, diesel right, because of we can use that. And can we call those as a pure substance or not that we will see. First of all, let us understand what do we mean by pure substance. A pure substance we can call, you can define it as a you know consist of a matter with a fixed chemical composition right. It will be homogeneous in its composition, then we call it as a pure substance right. Examples are water nitrogen, helium, carbon dioxide, you know hydrogen, oxygen, any gas, because it will be homogeneous. If I take a, <coughs> a cylinder of hydrogen gas, right. So, what will be its color, how we will know it is a hydrogen or a oxygen, I had suggested you to look at the symbol, right. I think you must not have looked at it, am I right. Please look at it, suppose as an engineer, somebody will say look this is oxygen cylinder and this is hydrogen, you may say make a mistake. So, if you make a mistake catastrophic will occur, am I right. So, you need to know this uh, you know color code and uh, let us say it is a hydrogen if it is containing a you know in a contained in a cylinder then it will be all uniform. So, therefore, I can call it as a pure substance. And as I asked earlier, can air be a considered as a pure substance? Of course, it can be provided the air is at the ambient temperature and pressure. If I take a air cylinder or air in this room, it will be uniform in chemical composition. You cannot separate the oxygen from you know nitrogen unless you do some separation procedure, you know, like or a some kind of a membrane you will have to use to separate it or how, how I can separate oxygen from nitrogen. One can think of membrane you know using, is there any other way of doing it, how? You can think of liquefying it right, if you liquefy it then one can think of is separating it out. So, therefore, it is at ambient temperature and pressure it will be uniform in chemical composition therefore, we can call it as a uh, what you call pure substance. Let us say if I say water and oil right, it will be definitely what it will be, can a mixture of water and oil be considered as pure substance. Similarly, if I take water and it is vapor right, can I call it as a pure substance. And if I take liquid air and its vapor, can I call it as a pure substance, right. So, which one is the three examples I have given, right. 
liquid air and its vapor, it cannot be really a pure substance, yes or no? Because you know some of the compositions between the both the liquid air and its vapor need not to be same. So, therefore, it cannot be and similarly for water and its vapor, can we call it as a pure substance or not? We can definitely call, because it is the same water molecule will be there, whether it is a liquid state or a vapor state. So, therefore, we can call it as a pure substance and water and oil, we cannot really call it as a uh, pure substance, because it is at different compositions. So, now whenever we are talking about like you know uh, we will be talking about a phase. So, what do you mean by a phase? Phase is basically a distinct state in which matter remains homogeneous physically and chemically. Chemically if it is homogeneous what do we call? We call it as a pure substance right, but here not only the chemically homogeneous, it should be physically as well. The common example you know in summer season, you will be getting some ice water right. If it is ice is there, then you know that is in solid phase and water will be in the liquid phase. This can be identified as a distinct molecular arrangement that is homogeneous throughout its boundary as I told the ice will be solid. So, it will be you know having a distinct boundary and that boundary which will separate from its liquid you know if we call it as a uh, what you call phase boundary. For example, if it is I will take another example this is a water and its vapor and this is your phase boundary where you know water can be converted into vapor and there is a you know water label you can see and that itself will be known as the phase boundary. So, the phase can be broadly divided into three categories one is solid phase, liquid phase and vapor phase right. And thermodynamic properties of a substance change abruptly at the phase boundary right yes or no. Although the certain properties like intensity properties for example, pressure or temperature you know will be remaining constant. So, therefore, that there will be change of certain uh, properties of the substance across the boundaries. For example, if you look at water right and if you look at its specific volume of the water, will it be same as that of the its vapor? It will be very different right, will order of magnitude difference will be there. So, but whereas the pressure here if I say it is ambient you take a, a pan and then heat the water. So, if you look at ambient pressure is there and temperature will be what may be 100 degree Celsius right. So, it will boil it will a vapor, a vapors will come over. So, that uh, our vapors will be produced. So, that it will be changing right that means, pressure and temperature remaining constant. However, the its uh, specific volume will be changing. So, to uh, make it more concrete you know you can say that liquid water in vapor coexist at 100 degree Celsius 101.325 kilo Pascals like uh, properties like uh, uh, specific volume, internal energy, specific enthalpy, entropy are quite different across the its boundary phase boundary that means, there is a lot of difference of this properties if you look at the numbers you know both the liquid and vapor will be quite different. <coughs> which we will see as we look at uh, in this uh, you know uh, uh, either in the this lecture or in the next lecture we will be looking at it. So, uh, let us look at the phases of a pure substance if you look at the this is a solid uh, kind of thing and there is a uh, which can be considered as a spring model like these are the uh, molecules which are sitting over here and it is as if connected with a solid uh, with a spring connected with a spring and these molecules 
in a solid are kept at their position uh, kind of a by large spring like intermolecular forces. You can this is a model, it is not that basically what will be existing between the molecules in a solid is the intermolecular forces and which will be uh, quite uh, large and uh, there will be also the repulsive forces right. Repulsive forces will be there only when these uh, molecules will come very closer to each other. That means, you know the distance between the molecules will be tending towards 0, then you will get a repulsive as a result you know like uh, <coughs> they can move. And these uh, molecules are basically will be vibrating you know in this uh, <coughs> ways it will be vibrating and then these molecules are being repeated at this pattern what we call it is in lattice structures kind of things it will be repeated and they will be together kind of things right. The intermolecular forces are quite high right. If you consider that uh, earlier days in our family system there is a lot of intermolecular force or inter man or the people things were there they can take more resistance right. If we apply a force you know or a kind of thing stress they can take and today uh, it is not right if you consider. And this can vibrate as you told as I told that this will be molecule will be vibrating over that and when you will be giving some kind of a heat or the temperature will go up what will happen this vibration energy will be increasing. And when it is increases then what happened that velocity of the uh, what you call uh, molecules or the which will be vibrating along with mean position that will be increasing as a result it will go away from this from their lattice and then move with a certain patterns and then you will get what you call the liquid state and this liquid state they will be togetherness, but they will be you know uh, not in a fixed position like in your solid. So, therefore, it became a fluid or a liquid and then if you go give more energy then what will happen that became separated out and then the molecules will be far away and they move in a random manner in the gas phases and as a result you know like uh, they will be interacting, but they will be interacting very rarely and by the interaction will take place through the uh, what you call uh, molecular collisions. If you look at in our uh, country that our earlier days the people were having what you call lot of uh, kind of forces they were togetherness was there and today after few years you know like uh, or what you call after maybe few years back we are liquid now today we are gaseous state and moving randomly although the each molecule having ha having a higher energy level right. So, this molecule will be having higher energy level and therefore, we get a lot of stress and strain in our life. So, if you look at I'm, what I am trying to emphasize here that solid is similar to our earlier culture of family having a family or a, or a village is having a lot of you know family bond was a stronger today it is broken and therefore, we became gaseous state and then we will be facing lot of problems. So, one has to look at that. So, now if you look at these things in the low temperature you know like the solid phase will be there atoms and molecule are held tightly in place togetherness you know. And as it is uh, you know temperature increases we you know uh, molecules will be separated from their place which were there occupying in a very secure manner that is and then the you know moved of course, they will remain molecules will remain together, but move relatively freely not in the fixed position like a solid. But in the gas when the temperature goes up the atoms or molecule move essentially unconstrained without any constant they will be moving here and there. And of course, there is energy state with the plasma states which are very very high temperature if you look at this is that the you know low temperature less than 100 here uh, you know this became 
above 100 and other thing of course, for water it is 100, but for other metal it will be different temperature to liquid temperature or and then when you go to thousands and ten thousands kind of things you know you will get a plasma state kind of things and then it will be fully ionized plasma is a very high temperature. So, uh, if you look at like uh, this is the kind of phase change what it occurs and we will be discussing more about that and uh, let us look at the all substances change their specific volume when subjected to change in pressure and temperature. And uh, as I told that you know like it will be changing for example, if I take a, a solid you know rod which is in elastic nature either I will give a force right or it is applied to a force or it is applied to a temperature there will be expansion right when it will remove that force or the temperature then it will be contact. Now, <coughs> that changes will be quite small right. If I consider the what you call a gas where I will apply the pressure and where I will apply the temperature or the heat then expansion will be very high. Therefore, the change in specific volume in case of solid and liquid is quite small as compared to the gas and we call it as a incompressible fluid. And and where it is you know change is very large then we call it as a compressible fluid. Now, question arises how to characterize it quantitatively right, because we will say look it is a compressible substance or incompressible substance by just looking at the specific volume change with the change in the pressure or temperature kind of thing, but how we will quantify it unless we know quantification some number we cannot really use it. Right. So, for that we will have to define you know two terms one is we are saying that the temperature is remaining constant right. There are two variables which can make the same changes in the volume. So, therefore, we will have to keep one of them constant we are saying that temperature is remaining constant and there will be change in volume with the application of the pressure, pressure I mean force here and then will be change in volume per unit volume with the change in pressure when the temperature is remaining constant we call it isothermal compressibility and keep in mind that this is having a negative sign here. Why that negative sign? Because whenever you are applying a force right and trying to compress it the volume will change volume will decrease will it increase or decrease it will definitely decrease. So, V 2 minus V 1 and V 2 is less than the V 1 therefore, negative signs comes over here, but we will just look at the another uh, way of quantifying it right. Uh, that is the coefficient of volume expansion where pressure will be remaining constant and temperature is change. So, if you look at the beta is basically uh, 1 over v into dou v by dou t when pressure is constant. So, if you look at this beta is having a positive quantities and uh, this is known as the coefficient of volume expansions and this will be uh, you know quite small if it is having incompressible substance. So, also the isothermal compressibility if it is large we call it a compressible substance right and keep in mind that these properties or this uh, you know quantities will be very useful for deriving this non measurable properties by using the measurable properties. For example, volume, pressure, temperature these are all measurable properties right. We will be using these coefficients uh, either the isothermal compressibility or the coefficient of volume expansion this we will be using to a connecting the non measurable properties with the measurable property and vice versa. 
So, let us look at simple compressible substance which we will be dealing with in this course and is one in which one relevant reversible work mode will be used and we that is the simple compressible substance we call. And as we know the state postulate says that independent thermodynamic properties that can be varied is equal to number of independent work reversible work mode plus 1. right? So, in the simple compressible substance reversible work mode work is basically 1. So, therefore, the total number of properties that can be varied independently is 2 in this case in the simple compressible substance. So, most convenient properties will be uh, what you call internal energy and uh, specific volume, specific internal energy and specific volume. So, we can think of pressure is a function of internal energy and uh, specific uh, volume, temperature similarly uh, function of specific internal energy and specific volume. So, also the entropy and other things and which will be uh, relating this to the uh, what you call uh, the other uh, non measurable properties later on and these relationships we call it as a fundamental relations which will be uh, looking at uh, towards the end of this course. And by knowing these fundamental uh, what you call uh, properties or the fundamental relations we can find out thermodynamic property of the system. And, uh, as I told that we will be discussing about these fundamental relations towards the end of this course. And so, but however, here we need to look at this thermodynamic properties in the mathematical relations, right. Either we can express in terms of mathematical relations or we can use a what you call tables, data tables like your steam table, refrigeration data tables and other things. And we can also use some charts or diagrams, right, to describe the process and also use the properties. So, thermodynamic properties, as I told earlier, that can be determined experimentally at specific temperature and pressure by interpolation method and using these fundamental relations, which I have not discussed. We can relate these experimental properties with the non experimental uh, properties. Of course, another way of uh, get doing is that by using the statistical thermodynamic at a higher temperature, because all these properties what we will be using uh, basically at the low temperature, because low temperature we can measure, but in the high temperature it is very difficult to measure. Let us say it is a you know something uh, 10,000 to 20,000 degree Celsius you are talking about, you cannot really measure it. You know. So, therefore, we need to use the statistical thermodynamics, uh, which we would not be discussing, but however, it can be done, right. So, now we will be looking at the phase change process in a pure substance, we will be considering the water as a uh, you know substance to be discussed the phase change processes and that can be valid also for other pure substances. We will consider a case of uh, water at 20 degree Celsius in a piston and cylinder uh, arrangement what is shown here. And water will be at 20 degree Celsius here and the pressure which is applied is 0.1 mega Pascal. So, if I will go on adding to the heat and if I take this as my system boundary right. So, what will happen? What will happen to this water? What properties will be changing? So, if you look at this is at 20 degree Celsius and what will happen to the temperature of the water? Definitely it will increase you know you are giving heat and what happens to the pressure? Will it increase? Will it decrease or what will happen? 
it will be remaining what? Same, because you are applying the same 0.1 mega Pascal, it would not be changing. That means, here it will be constant pressure process, one can think of right. And then what happened to the specific volume? What will happen? Volume will increase, right? But the increase, you know, will be not much as we have seen that it will be water at this point it will be incompressible because a very, you know, water we consider as an incompressible substance, right? And this state at 20 degree Celsius we call it is subcooled state also. So, now what will happen if we will go on this temperature, temperature will be going up like 20 degree, 25 degree like go on and then there will be a temperature it will come that is known as like let us say it will reach the water temperature 99.6 degree Celsius. What will happen at that point with the pressure equal to the point uh, what you call 1 mega Pascal? what will happen? It will start boiling, right. Once you start boiling, what happens to its temperature? It will be remaining constant, temperature will not change. Then the water bubbles which will be you know going up and it will go up, because it is right and then collected and then there will be the vaporization will start occurring right and once this vaporization occurs what it will be it will be a mixture of water and its vapor right and what happens to pressure pressure remain constant temperature is also remaining constant but the specific volume increases at a very high rate why because the specific volume of the vapor is one order magnitude higher than that of the water, right. So, here therefore, the volume will be increasing rapidly kind of things. And keep in mind that this all these things happening in a very, very quasi static process or quasi equilibrium process, right. If I look at if I will take this heat out from this here, what will happen? Some of the vapor will condense back to the where? To the water. And similarly, heat I will take out, it will be known as the what you call it will be temperature also will be reducing from the system. Whenever I am taking the heat from the system to surrounding, let us say it is at 50 degree Celsius here. And then you know it will reduce, so that it can press back. So, if you look at this temperature increase here from let us say 20 degree Celsius to the higher temperature with the addition of heat to the system from the from its surrounding, we will call it as a sensible change in sensible enthalpy change, okay? because you can sense it. Here the temperature is remaining constant, although you are giving heat you will give go on giving heat, but still the temperature is remaining constant, because that heat what you give we call it latent heat. And how long this will go on? That means, that temp, even though you are giving heat to the system, but there is no change in temperature, although the specific volume will be go on increasing, right. How long it will go on this process? How long? Till the last drop of water is converted into its vapor, right. And in this case, if you go on giving heat, what will happen? The specific volume definitely will increase, right. And what happens to temperature? what happens to temperature? Temperature also will go on increasing, right. So, and this uh, suppose in this case I will take you know 
it is last uh, these things some heat then what will happen this will be condensed back to the liquid and it will get into this two phase situation because this we call it as a wet mixture because mixture of vapor and liquid in this case and then it can come to the liquid. So, this process we can trace in a what you call T V diagram this is the temperature right this is the volume if you look at we started here with 20 degree Celsius right and this we call it as a compressed liquid or subcool liquid then the temperature is remaining constant and this point we call it as a saturated liquid point right this point we call it as a saturated liquid point and in this case there will be a mixture of both the liquid and its vapor and keep in mind that temperature is remaining constant and this we call it as a saturated vapor line vapor point and as you goes you know uh, go beyond this and add heat there will be increase in the not only the specific volume also the temperature up, right this we call it as a superheated vapor right and if i will conduct this experiment for different pressure let us say if it is a lower pressure what will happen if it is a lower pressure. So, it will be go on this you know kind of things point and again it will go like that way. If it is higher pressure what will happen it will go on this ways. So, what is happening to this saturated vapor point? It is changing and in this case the higher pressure this is P is greater than 1 atmosphere pressure and here is P is less than 1 atmosphere pressure. I can say P here is 0 0.1 um, atm and this is P is equal to 1 at or 10 atm. Okay. 10 atmosphere pressure right and if I will go on like that what will happen if I go on increasing pressure what will happen let us say I will take a little higher pressure here what will happen what you are observing. So, that means this portion the saturated mixtures are portion is decreasing like these points are contracting or becoming lower and this of course, it is occurring at higher specific volume and these points are occurring at the lower specific volume. So, there will be a situation where the liquid will directly converted into what it is vapor right. So, let us look it further. So, I, uh, I must emphasize this thing that as I told earlier that if the entire process between state 1 and 5 is reversed by cooling the water while maintaining the same pressure, water will go back to the state 1 right tracing the same path. Then amount of heat release will be exactly same as the amount of heat added during the heating process. Right, that is a very important point you should keep in mind <coughs> and the temperature at which the water starts boiling depends on the pressure we have already seen that. Therefore, if the pressure is fixed so is the boiling temperature and uh, the temperature saturation temperature for 0.1 mega Pascal is basically 99 degree 99.6 degree Celsius per water and saturation pressure will be uh, what you call 0 0.1 mega Pascal you know for 99.6 degree Celsius water. It is just I am saying saturation temperature saturation pressure because it is corresponding to that. And for a pure substance you can think of the saturation pressure you know goes on increasing with the increase in temperature right. So, what is its implication? 
can I really learn something from this? Can you or in other words can you tell me based on this simple principle can we devise something which can be useful for us? See uh, you might be seen your mother uses the pressure cooker for cooking food. Am I right or wrong? Yes or no? You might be knowing, na? aware or not? Why it is so? Pressure cooker, you must have seen, na? right? Yes or no? How many of you not seen pressure cooker? No, not a single. You have not seen pressure cooker in your home. I am really amazed by this. So, what will be the pressure in the pressure cooker? Any idea? Okay, let me ask you a question. Suppose you boil the dal in a pan which is subjected to atmospheric pressure, how much time it will take? It will be taking something let us say around 20 minutes. Okay? But if I use the same amount of dal and same amount of water in a pressure cooker, how much time it will take? Will it be higher or lower? Huh? It will be lower, let us say 5 minutes. That means what? Why it is taking? If you look at this curve, right? That means you know let us say it is at a lower temperature like kind of things or lower pressure something 100 kind of right. Ambient temperature if you look at right let us say this is right. Ambient temperature we have seen amb ambient pressure we know that you know water will boil at 99.6 degree Celsius. right? So, at a higher pressure what will happen to the saturation temperature? It will be higher, right? yes or no. So, that if you are boiling at a higher temperature using a pressure cooker in which the pressure inside the pressure cooker will be higher than the atmospheric pressure, then you can cook it easily or quickly right generally you know two atmospheric pressure is being kept in a uh, pressure cooker domestic pressure cooker right but if you look at the nutrient values of those food will be much lower than the what lower than the what you can cook in the atmospheric pressure but you want to have a fast for example let me ask you a question is very interesting you know Suppose you cook in a pressure cooker and you cook in a solar cooker and you cook in a um, your general uh, with a simple pan, same thing by the same person which will be testier? Three cases I have told. So, which one will be testier and why? You are not saying me anything, at least I was thinking you will tell me. Huh? No idea. Let me tell you that all these things will be cooked at a low, you know, like in the solar cooker, temperature at which the food will be cooked is much lower. In the simple pan with using LPG stove or any other stove, right, will be at higher temperature. And the pressure cooker will be at highest temperature among all these three. Okay. So, where the food will be tastier? solar cooker right you got the point why it is because the temperature gradient is very low so also in our life that when we are subjected to the less gradient we perform better okay so that is the important point we should keep in mind and that is the application of thermodynamics similarly the saturation you can think of several of examples you know one can think of cooling and getting ice right from the water by lowering the pressure, I can get ice just by lowering the pressure. If I go to the vacuum, the water become you know 
converted into ice and several other things. So, as I was telling that these are the points, these are the points is the saturated liquid point and similarly these points are the saturated vapor points at different pressures as if you look at these uh, zones are goes on decreasing and there is a point where the liquid if you look at these are the basically liquid right it will be converted into gas and that point that is uh, corresponding to the 22.06 mega Pascals and the temperature of 373.95 degrees Celsius right where the liquid will instantly converted into vapor that means the specific volume of the liquid and its vapor is same are you getting my point that means at this point the critical point here the v g is equal to v f v f means is a liquid specific volume of the liquid is same and this critical point is very important right because that will tell me whether it is a liquid or the vapor and that is a you know kind of things and if you look at this is liquid and above this point we call it as a vapor and above this point all this vapor you know will be we call it superheated uh, what you call vapor kind of things. And if you do that then you will not having this weight mixture this is known as weight mixture, weight mixture means is the mixture of liquid and it is vapor and that will be corroded and we will be discussing that maybe uh, whenever we are talking about power plant steam power plant and boiler you know like we will be encountering this mixtures it will corrode it and other problems. Nowadays people are thinking of using or rather they are using not thinking they are using super critical boilers because they will be operating at a very very high pressure. So, that liquid it will instantly get into the vapor and you will not you will avoid the mixture of uh, the wet or wet mixture mixture of the vapor and liquid. So, if I join this line you know points right if I join these points right this is known as this line known as what saturated liquid line this line is known as saturated liquid line and similarly if I join these points over here in these points this is known as saturated vapor line and keep in mind this slope is steep and this is little flat and that indicates that in between these two lines the mixture that means weight mixture will be there mixture of vapor and water will be there and question arises what would be the quant you know like percentage of water what will be percentage of vapor. In this case the percentage of you know vapor will be 0 here, here the per percentage of vapor will be in this point will be 100 percent right. So, we will be defining a quantities for that and, uh, and also look at how to find out these properties because we will be interested in evaluating the properties you know in these mixtures also like internal energy, enthalpy, uh, entropy all those properties we need to evaluate. So, what will be available here the properties will be available here and properties will be available there, but we need to know this and then find it out that is the challenge we will have to look at how we will do that. So, just to say that what are the critical point pressure and temperature data let us look at some of the data here like water I have already told you the critical uh, temperature is uh, 647.39 at critical pressure of 22.07 mega Pascals and this is the critical volume. And various other uh, substances I have put it I have placed it in this table that is carbon dioxide, oxygen, hydrogen and helium. 
interestingly if you will find the critical uh, temperature for helium is very very low 5.3 Kelvin you know. And so also the pressure is something 0.23 uh, mega Pascals. Of course, the if you um, uh, look at the others are in between, but most of the metals have higher critical temperature than water, because you know like it is having a, a what you call uh, this thing. So, they are having higher metal uh, uh, critical temperatures at which it will be vaporizing. So, just to uh, have a feel for this what I have saying that this will be uh, what you call just to summarize this and we will say that this is your saturated liquid line and this is your saturated uh, vapor line and this is your constant pressure line P is constant and this is your constant uh, another constant pressure line that P 2 is greater than P 1 and this as I told that this will be basically compressed liquid region we call and people also call it as a sub cooled liquid region sub cooled you know or compressed liquid region we call and this is your superheated vapor region right and we do always try to use in your power plant superheated vapors you know kind of things we need to avoid this mixture saturated liquid and vapor mixtures. So, this is the in a uh, T V diagram where the properties you know like where this can be processes can be described. And uh, let us look at the saturated liquid and vapor mixtures <coughs> kind of things like uh, because as I told we will be interested to look at the uh, how to handle this here saturated liquid and vapor mixtures. So, we will define a quantity right which is x I call that is nothing but mass of the vapor divided by mass of you know total mass 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 means total mass means mass of the liquid right this is the mass of liquid and this is the mass of gas or the vapor right. So, uh, this we call it as a quality what it indicates it indicates that how much of mass of vapor is there with respect to the total mass of the mixture. And we will be using this same symbol f for the liquid okay, because historically this is being used and it is a meaning is basically liquid because in German it this word has come from progress. So, kind of things and this x you know quality if you look at this is we call it the steam quality you know steam quality. So, which will be as I told that x will be becoming 0 here right and this will be 1 here x quality will be 0 here and 1 here in between it will be between 0 and 1. It can be 0.1, it can be 0.2, it can be 0 0.5, 0 0.1 means the uh, you know if there is a 1 kg of mass this will be 1.1 .1 kg will be the gas or the vapor in that. So, let us look at uh, the V total volume becoming basically uh, mass of the uh, fluid into specific volume plus mass of the gas into specific uh, uh, volume of the gas. And we know this mass total mass will be mass of liquid plus mass of gas. And if I divide this by the mass what will happen? And this is if you look at what is this by definition this is nothing but your m g by m m is the mass of the mixtures right and m g is the vapor what is this this is nothing but your x right quality steam quality or the right. So, then I can write down this be nothing but your this is become 1 
and uh, as I told this is nothing but your x. So, this is m f by m plus x right. So, I can write down that m f by m is nothing but 1 minus x and if I will put this thing here you know this term over here and this x this is nothing but your x this is nothing but your x. So, I can find out the specific volume is nothing but 1 minus x uh, v f plus x v g right. And we can also write down v a plus x v f g, v f g is nothing but v g minus v f right. So, therefore, the x one can define v minus v f divided by v g minus v f. So, if you look at as I told earlier that x is basically 0 here and x is 1. So, therefore, at any point I can find out that x is equal to v minus v m v f right. So, this is the basically v here and this is your v f at this point and this is your v g divided by v f g the difference will give me the x. So, as I know this quality right x then I can knowing this thing I can find out all other properties like internal energy, enthalpy, entropy because if I know this v u g at this point uh, sorry at this point u g and u f at this point I can find out in between similarly enthalpy, entropy and other things. So, we will be using this quality uh, in our uh, calculation later on and by knowing this quality we can find out properties of the weight mixtures right. So, I will stop over here and we will discuss further in the next lecture.